Hey, what's going on everyone? Don here and you're watching VR Gamer Dude and today I am finally sharing my thoughts on the Pimax Crystal. After using it for a full month, I've got some thoughts. Stay tuned. Okay, so before we get started, I want to thank Pimax for sending this out to the studio. So, for full disclosure, I did not buy this headset. They did send it to me for the purposes of this review. So, with that said, let's get started. All right, so, you know, I, I gotta tell you, I've spent about a month with this headset now, and it has been kind of a love-hate relationship, and we'll kind of break that down I'll, I'll, as the review goes along here. So the first thing I want to talk about is the, the build quality of the headset. And, you know, it, it is your typical Pimax headset. I, I, they, they've, they've kept the same design that they've always had. Uh, so, you know, you see this and you instantly know, hey, that's a Pimax headset. Um, it is a little bit smaller, it, it, a little bit more narrow than, say, your 8KX or your 5K Super. Uh, the a little more heavy as well. Uh, uh, they, they've they've packed a lot of hardware here into the front of the headset, so it, it is a little bit of a of, of a heavy fronted headset. Now they they do balance it nicely with the strapping system here. Uh, once again, coming over from the previous models with a little bit more refined in the back here for the battery, uh, but. Uh, it, it tends to balance the weight pretty well, so, you know, it, it's not bad. Actually, I've worn this thing for almost about two hours flying in Microsoft Flight Simulator, and it just melted away. I mean, so once you get the strap correct and everything like that, it, it, it really, it's not bothersome at all on the weight. So... Um, you know, other things, the, the padding, the padding is really nice. Uh, I'm, I'm once again, that kind of carried over from their previous lines. Uh, I, I've always liked this design of padding, this, this wide forehead pad here. It's very soft. It's very comfortable. They do also include your traditional standard pad in the box. Uh, I, I prefer the comfort kit, I think is what they call it, their comfort padding. Um, it, it just fits well, and that kind of bleeds into the next subject I was going to talk about, which is light leakage. And, you know, with this padding on and with these nice, very soft silicon nose pads here, I get no light leakage in this headset. So everything is just, the whole real world is completely gone when I've got my crystal on. Looking at the headset, the lenses here, now I do uh, have that covered up with my VR Rock lens inserts. Uh, I do wear glasses, as you guys know, um, but uh, the lenses are very nice. They are the glass aspheric lenses, uh, and, you know, gone are any god rays. Uh, thank God. No pun intended. So, um... Down here at the bottom, you've got the little camera. I'm assuming that is the eye tracking. Um, I am running the beta software, so it does do the auto IPD. Now, I'm not going to lie, it gets mine wrong all the time, and I have not been able to complete the eye tracking calibration. So, definitely still some work going on behind the scenes on the eye tracking, but it is working, and the, the auto IPD is working, so kind of hit and miss but it's there okay so you know the one thing about this it, it is a little more narrow than than most of your Pimax headsets and and because of that the eye box did seem a little smaller like they, they do have the cutouts here on the side for glasses uh, another reason I went with my VR rock prescription lens inserts here it, you know I did not have to worry about wearing my glasses underneath and and scratching the lenses of the Pimax which are not cheap to replace, um, or scratching my glasses, which are not cheap to replace. So, uh, you know, either way you go, I, I definitely, if you, if you have to wear glasses, I do recommend getting a set of these and just look in my description. There's even a discount you can get. Um, but other than that, the eye box is kind of tighter. So, so if you have larger glasses, it is going to be a little more uncomfortable for you. So, uh, a couple of other negative things about the headset, uh, the, the build quality of the headset that I didn't like. Uh, first is the battery thing here. So, uh, if 
this battery is like a torture device. I, I mean, literally, you can see the imprints here. I had to press it so hard to get it out. These clips are just horrible. Uh, so I don't know who designed this part of the headset. Uh, I understand that it needs a battery, but this is just horrible on a, a headset of this quality you would expect something that just glides and softly goes in there but no uh so you got to really kind of get it in there and then you got to pinch those down again to kind of get it up in place until you hear it click um the other thing is is i'm not sure what this top rubber strap accomplishes because it's not adjustable so if your head is smaller than the, the strap here, it, it never even actually touches it and it just kind of just flops around there. Um, or if your head's too big, it, it actually makes the, the headset feel tight. And I, I tested it with a few other people and that's kind of where we kind of landed on that. So I, I don't know why that's there and not adjustable. Maybe it's a, a means of carrying the headset or, or hanging the headset on a hook. I, I don't know. If somebody wants to explain it to me in the comments, that would be great. But I, for a month, I have tried to rack my brain as to why Pimax did it that way. So lastly, you know, the, the, the other thing I wanted to talk about is this breakout box. Now... I like the idea of the breakout box because this is eventually going to be a standalone headset. And quite frankly, the, with the 5K Super and the AKX, it was kind of difficult to plug in here at the headset junction because you had to remove the padding and the, this cable has to loop around through here. So it's nice that they included it, but again, it's not a piece that feels very premium. And I'll tell you why. When you're plugging in the cabling, it, it, it really feels like you're going to break something, or at least on the unit that they sent me. So you get it up in there, and, and the metal pieces, you kind of feel them scraping together, but it's a, it's, you kind of, you know, you're kind of fumbling around, and you can't find the hole, so to speak. And it, it all of a sudden, you get it kind of lined up, and you finally figure out that it's lined up, and you have to push it really hard, and it just pops and it just feels like you're going to break something. And so I'm to the point where I'm almost about ready to try to remove this and just put the cable back the old way straight into the headset. So not my favorite addition. It's a great idea, but it would have been better if it would have had some sort of very nice, easy insert mechanism. So, you know, not a deal breaker by any means, but it, it definitely is not the best feature of the headset so the best feature of the build of the headset in my opinion is something that is kind of optional but something i highly recommend and that's the dmas speakers i the, these things are absolutely incredible sounding I, the sound field that they create the 3d audio you could hear a pin drop over there and i would know it's over there the bass is just thunderous, so I cannot recommend adding the DMAS speakers. Okay, so let's talk about the controllers for a second here. Now, I said this in the unboxing video that I put out a couple of weeks ago, but I like the fact that we are starting to see some parity across the VR controller ecosystem here. And, you know, the fact that people are kind of cloning the meta controllers, I don't have a problem with that because I like those controllers. They, they, they fit well in my hands. And, I, you know, a lot of people were saying, oh, that these are kind of a direct ripoff of the touch controllers. Well, so be it. it, it I, once again, it, it's familiar and I can just put my hands on them and I know exactly where all my buttons are, my sticks, everything's exactly where I want it to be. So the question is, is do they work well? And, you know, I will say it has been kind of hit and miss on that. It, the, the, the tracking is decent. When you're doing slow movements, I mean, I can literally get them to touch in the real world. And I mean, they're touching right here in VR. So the thing is, is when I'm doing something with really fast movements, sometimes this one will kind of jerk away. So the tracking isn't a hundred percent there yet, in my opinion, for the controllers. 
Now, I did recently get some updates to the controllers. I do need to go back in and test them again. Uh, they, they did have a firmware update the other day. Uh, so maybe that has uh, solved some of the issues. And, you know, while I will say Pimax is very good at that. They, they do put out a product and then they, they really update it through software. So going to try them again. But right now I would say they're passable. Uh, but again, really finding this more for sim use than say Beat Saber use. So, okay, so let's talk about the, the, the number one thing that everybody asks about this headset and that is the visuals. So it is called Crystal for a reason. And, and man, let me tell you, I, you can't see all of them back there, but I've got 28 VR headsets. I've been doing VR for like over 25 years, and I have never seen anything that looks this crystal, pun completely intended, clear in VR. So this is finally what I have kind of dreamed for clarity in, in virtual reality. And you know, the ability to read small text in, in flight simulator or the, the, the inky blacks that the screens produce here in something like a space simulator like Elite Dangerous, it just blows my mind. It is literally, in a way, for me, like experiencing VR all over again for the first time. And now that has come with some trade-offs so you know it, it is you know a beautiful screen it's crystal clear the colors pop you can read small text but you think Pimax and you think FOV and the FOV on this headset is not horrible but it's not what you think of when you think of a Pimax headset Okay, so coming from something like the 5K Super or the AKX, it is a little bit of a disappointment. I'm not going to lie. It, it's a little shocking because it's kind of reverb G2 area, like definitely better than, you know, I would say definitely better than Quest 2, probably like Quest Pro. I, it's very similar to me to the, to the size of the Quest Pro's FOV but it seems more squared than rounded, if that makes any sense. So, you know, it's not horrible. Once again, it's just, I would love to see those wider FOV lenses that, that Pimax keeps teasing because that, if they could get this kind of clarity or even close to this kind of clarity with the wider FOV, mind blow. All right, so let's talk about gameplay in the crystal here. So, you know, as far as PC VR headsets go, it, it is your typical Steam VR headset. So if you got Steam VR set up and ready to go, you get this thing connected to Pi Tool, boom, they interface, you're up and running. Now, does that mean it's going to work in every game? Well, I'm, I'm finding that that's not the case. So there, there are plenty of games that it has worked in like obviously flight simulator and uh i, I let's see here vertigo 2 I, I played in this it was like super fun some star wars squadrons I, I mean just you know just testing it with all of these games that i've, I've kind of gone back and and played in the crystal so most of them work just fine and and a couple of them though i it's interesting. I have this bug where my right arm is just down at my side and, and you can click the buttons and everything works, but it just loses tracking in the right controller. I, I don't know why. I cannot figure out what it is, but games like Wandering in Space, uh, games like uh, Hubris, uh, all of them seem to experience that bug. So interesting hoping that somebody figures out a fix for that or if you know a fix for it could you please put it in the description or i'm sorry put it in the comment section down there that would be great so uh i will say that i do find obviously this best for sim usage uh you 
know, the, the times that I have played games like American Truck Simulator or Flight Simulator or anything simulator, uh, this has been the best experience I've ever had. And I think that, that a lot of that has to do with that clarity uh, that you get from the crystal and the ability to read those small gauges. And, and I mean, I've really like I was driving an American truck simulator the other night and I actually got brought to levels of presence with this. So super cool. I cannot imagine playing any PC VR game in any other headset now than this crystal. It has spoiled me to all of my other headsets. Okay, so aside from gameplay, another thing that I feel the Crystal is outstanding for is media consumption. And, you know, going into something like big screen and watching a movie or your favorite television show in this headset is an absolute dream. It is super crystal clear. So went in there the other night, loaded up a couple of my old IMAX rips, and it was fantastic I mean, it, this was literally like going to amc so finally finally i could watch a movie and completely enjoy it in a vr headset now the g2 came close uh you don't get me wrong i used to love watching movies in my g2 it was my preferred media headset up until now but with the the awesome audio from the d mass the crystal clear screen here you definitely could not get a better PC VR headset right now for media consumption. Now, I know Big Screen has their own headset. I can't seem to get them to reach out back to me, so I, I am trying to get one of those into the studio for review as well. Stay tuned, hopefully. If not, oh well. All right, so the cord is your typical Pimax cord here. Uh, you know, it, the nice thing is, is that I could actually use my fiber cord uh, that I already had, which is a little thinner, a little more flexible. Uh, it, it has your standard, you know, uh, display port and USB 3 and then the uh, proprietary connector here at the headset. So the thing that is a little different that I kind of alluded to just a second ago is the battery. So this headset does actually require a battery pack. Um, it, it is, a, a again, very difficult to get in and out of the, the, the slotting here. Uh, the, the battery charger itself really feels like cheap plastic. I'm not going to lie. Um, every time I slot these two together again, I feel like I'm going to break something. So is, you know, I mean, literally you can see how that just literally just kind of bends. It, so I don't know. Pimax, this is something I would definitely look at getting a better solution for. Um, it shouldn't be that hard to provide a, a high quality battery charging solution with a very expensive 1500 plus dollar headset so uh the batteries themselves i have actually had it run out on me now they do also include as you guys saw in the unboxing video a, a usb 3.0 powered adapter uh, even with the powered adapter, it seems like after about four or five hours, it's telling me that it's time to change the battery. Now they do include a second battery. So, you know, and the headset has a little bit of internal charge. So you just turn the screen off, you know, hot swap your batteries and then you're back to playing. So it's not horrible by any means. And the battery even adds a little bit of counterweight to the back of the headset, but it's definitely something new and something that you got to get used to. Now, the battery will obviously come more in handy when we get the standalone working, which they are teasing right now that they are getting close to releasing the standalone version. You can actually see the home screen. I, I don't know if people know about that, but I mean, if you just literally take the cable out, put it in the all-in-one mode, and then boot the headset from, from, you know, doing a cold boot, you will actually boot into the Pimax loading area, uh, so to speak, but it just says that it's coming soon. 
So, all right, uh, let's see here. We've talked about a lot of things in this review, so I think it's kind of time to sum up everything into my final... All right, so some final thoughts here on the Pimax Crystal. And, you know, I have a few, uh, as you guys have seen throughout this video. I, and as, as I said in the beginning, it is a love-hate relationship, but it's mostly love, all right? I, I'm not going to lie. I have never seen VR look this good. All right, and I've been doing VR for like over 25 years, so obviously I saw it look really horrible cool back then. But it's just another level. I mean, the, the clarity in this headset is just on another level. The screens, the, 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 the glass lenses with no god rays or distortions or weirdness, I, it really makes VR look amazing. So, FOV could be a little improved, you know. They do have those new lenses coming out soon. So, you know, hopefully we will get those into the studio. I'll be able to give you guys my thoughts on those. Um, the only other things, you know, I guess you guys want to hear from me is, is what I recommend that you buy this headset. It is not cheap. This is, this is like fifteen sixteen hundred bucks depending on where you are and taxes and things like that so if you are a sim gamer if, if your purpose in virtual reality gaming is simulators like flying simulators driving simulators absolutely freaking lootly i you guys this headset is like it will change the game tremendously because finally you can read all of the little text all over the gauges and you know when you're driving you can actually kind of gauge corners and things a lot better because you can see farther into the distance so definitely a sim gamers headset for sure so if you are doing more active gaming, if you're doing rhythm gaming, if you're doing, you know, high intense first person shooter gaming, I still would recommend the headset, but with a caveat of the controllers still need a little work. The tracking, in my opinion, is still just a little jumpy and jerky and, you know, do I feel that's going to get fixed over time? Sure, absolutely. Pimax is notorious for throwing out a headset and then, you know, throwing out, you know, feature after feature after update after update. And then finally, you know, uh, almost a year in, you finally got the headset that you're, you know, wanting. So until that time, I don't know. It, it, it is a great headset. It still looks good. It still sounds good. But if you're needing precision in the tracking right now it's gonna be kind of hit and miss so now they do have the steam vr faceplate coming out so if you've already got the base stations and you know all that and index controllers and you you you'd probably just get this headset throw that new faceplate on there and you are golden you won't have to worry about the camera tracking or any of that you'll be right back to your lighthouse based tracking and everything will be fine so that is another thing I love about this headset as well, is the fact that we are going to see some slight modularity with the different face plates and the different lenses. So, you know, more to love than to hate. So uh, the things I hate, a lot of them can be fixed, and I think they will. So would I recommend it? Yeah, I, I would. I would definitely recommend this headset for PC VR gamers. And, uh, you know, it's going to have a standalone mode as well. It it's there. It's just not fully functional yet. So you're going to get extra use out of the fact that you can do some stuff standalone as well. So for the price range, I definitely think it's worth it. Um, now... With that said, if you are going to buy one, do me a solid. Head to my link in the description. You guys know I'm an affiliate with Pimax. I have been for years. That's no secret. Uh, if you do that, you will get $20 off of your order, and it helps my channel out a little bit. So I would appreciate that. Or just use code VRGAMERDUDE. You know, that, that'll help you out as well. If you're looking for the VR Rock prescription lenses, same thing. Code VRGAMERDUDE. You'll get 10% off of your entire order. So if you're like me, definitely look into that as well. But 
for me, that's going to do it today, guys. Thank you so much for watching to the end of this video. I know it was a long one, so if you made it this far, that definitely means the world to me. And if this was your first time coming by the channel, thank you so much for coming by to check out what I do here at VR Gamer, dude. And if you liked what you saw, you know what to do on the way out the door. Go ahead and, you know, hit that like and smash subscribe and ring the bell so you get notified the next time I do something cool in VR. But for me, I'll see you in the next one. This is Don, signing off.